All right, welcome to my garage. Uh, this is a three car setup where we have roughly 31 feet wide plus some other little, well, this is a 10 by 10 area. Uh, but what we're doing here today, I'm gonna take you through and follow along uh, Perry and his team from Dumb Right Electric. Uh, we're gonna be following along a relocation of the sub panel, wiring Tesla chargers, wiring for ceiling mounted uh, hose reels, TVs, uh, lighting, all that stuff. So you can see they're already uh, ahead of us here this morning. Um, but what we're gonna do is move the sub panel, the, the, the full panel, we're probably gonna have to create a sub panel as well. So they're taking the panel from where it is right now and moving it to the other side of the wall. And so the concept here, we'll ask him about it, but the concept here is all the wires come in from left to right. Uh, and so they're gonna move and put the panel outside uh, a few feet to the left. Uh, and so that way all they have to do is then just to pull the wires up through and then bring it back on the new panel. So let's go outside and take a look at where they're, uh, where they're planning to put this and uh, see how this is gonna work. You guys ready for the camera? No. Nope. <laughs> you just do your thing. You, huh? do, you do your thing. All right. All right, so this is where the power comes in, all right? And I had them put a few, we put a few outlets on there so they didn't use up space in the panel. And so we're putting the new panel, what, right next to this, to the right slightly? Yeah, so they're gonna put the new panel, bring all the wires out here. Apparently they do this kind of relocating thing all the time. And so here's our new, new panel. Which I know you're thinking, pain in the butt, you gotta walk outside to flip a breaker. I'd rather do that than have a giant box in the middle of my garage. So we took the air handler out and moved it to the attic. We took the water heater out and moved it to the side of the building of the, of the house here. And now we're taking the electric panel on. It's gonna cost me a lot of money to do that, but I think it's, I think it's worth it. And uh, Perry was telling me it's no big deal, piece of cake. I already called my friend Katie. She's my my drywall friend. Everybody needs a drywall friend because we're about to mangle this place. So, for instance, I've got you know I got I want to sub want to subwoofer from a very specific location, which is symmetrically you know opposite of that. So I'm gonna put subwoofers on either side. And so in order to do that, it means we've got to cut a giant hole in the wall in order to get the wire in there because it's underneath the window. Only live one. Only live one. That's gonna be the blue tape is the top of my countertop. That's where the countertop's gonna go. We're gonna okay. float the, the saber cat. And uh, they'll have about eight, eight and a quarter inches off the floor. I'm also, for the first time, I don't normally mount the closets, but I'm gonna mount the closets as well. But then I'm going to, I don't like it when the closets, so I figure a 48 inch wide closet. I don't like it when the upper cabinets match. So the upper cabinets are actually going to go slightly above it. So I'm going to have 22 inches from the countertop to the bottom of the cabinets. And then we have to wire in um, hard wire for our, uh, for our lights, for under cabinet lighting. As well as um, we're doing some, uh, Harry turned me on to some uh, pretty nifty little uh, under cabinet uh, power strips or plugs. So we're going to be doing something like that and that's going to go over toward, toward this area. But we'll have three uppers on either side of the uh, of the TV. But of course, this is a furry stripped wall, so there's not a lot of room to work in the wall. This is a block, and then a uh, and then what a half inch furry strip, and then drywall on top of that. And so he's going to cut this whole section of the wall off in order to get wiring in there. We're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to dig the wall out, though. It's, it's gotta go into that cavity. So, gotcha. I just didn't know how many inches. Yeah. So here's the stud right there. So I gotta make sure that we miss that stud. So now you're gonna take it and cut it all the way over to here, so we can get it to the wall. Okay, cut it all the way 
back and pull it out. You just want to make sure not to get that blade in there and get a wire. Okay, gotcha. All right. Go. That's what we want to do. Because these wires are coming from here. So if we move them over here, they're going to be short enough. Okay. We can go into the outside panel without making any connections. Okay. Here. Yeah, there was a door right here, right? There was an air handler right here. There was a water heater right there. It probably would have been cheaper to build a new house. But then you don't get to do all this fun. This is my kind of work. Destroying an old house. This is my kind of work. Just folded arms, just relax. Watching an army of uh, people who know what they're doing do it. And then when Mike comes, then we're just going to have this easy street just bolt stuff to the wall. Well, we got to cut the floor. So I spent all day yesterday whole thing gridded out, set up. So the center line of the room, the middle of, the, the middle of these two walls is right here. So I'm excluding the little bump out on the left yeah, and right of the garage, but the center line is right here. And so then I started laying out, I'm like, well, when we cut the floor for the lift, we're gonna do a recessed noose bomb. When we cut the floor for the lift, I want it to be centered on these expansion joints. And so I spent, half a day getting this all gridded out and set up. And then I walked back and I looked and said, well, shoot, that center line of this expansion joint is not the center line of the room. And so then I decided, well, I want the lift centered on these expansion joints. That's, that'll be nice, perfect. So then I regridded and moved everything over four inches. So that way, this was now the center of the room, if you will. And then I pulled the car in and realized that my four inches to the left, the real center line was the way to go. Because what you don't want to do, you don't want to take the car and have to kind of wiggle in here. You want to just pull straight in. And so this whole thing needs to go over four inches to the left. It's no big deal, but now I know. Because when I was, I was all done, had it all worked out, you can see I, there's a purple line over there, and then there's a normal thin line. The purple line is the four inches to the right. So I moved everything over to the right, and when I pulled the car in, I put everything away from the right. Oh crap, it needs to be on the center line of the room. So that's what we're doing. And so you can see this, you know, this whole panel is right smack in the middle of where it, it's not even in the center. It's like, it messes everything up. Mm. At least if it was centered, it'd be fine. Cause then I could do a mantle mount, and just pull the TV down over and then move it back up. But no, it has to be just slightly off center. And so that's why I'm moving it. And hopefully the house doesn't blow up. That'll be good. Let's just see what they get Don't chew that, buddy. Don't even think about it. What are you doing, Chase? He looks terrible. Rumors, they cut his whole body and they leave his head like a poof on his head. But they cut his eyes and everything, so we had to cut the poof off. That's the look they want. Like, yeah, the poof. Like it's a village's look. Yeah, what is it, the 1950s? <laughs> Come on. Why they got in a 15 inch? Take that control of your life. Because it's a spark igniter, it does not pull a thing. And what's the other one going in? This other one? Yeah, yeah. There's my sprinkler. I'm going to move everything to the other side. Yep. Okay. All right. Yep. Hold it up. This uh, panel has to be able to open up. And it, it has to have clearance here oh. so we're I mean we're gonna get it in there but it's tight. yeah it's gonna be tight I like tight yeah no <laughs> waste of space no waste of space oh it'll look pretty there's gonna be a lot going on here we grow up with some trees all this is gonna be rocked and nice and beautiful but they just have to dig a giant hole in the front yard coming up here so kind of waiting to get that done so we got on uh, April 1st, which is what, three days from now, the Thursday? 
they're coming and they're doing the, uh, so the attic stairs are gonna turn around the other way and we're doing the uh, motorized magic stairs. You're gonna wanna watch that video, it's gonna be sweet. So we gotta get some wires relocated and outlets and stuff put in because that just needs a regular you know, 110 plug. And then over here on this side, we're gonna be doing a magic lift. And so the concept would be bring the stairs down, bring the lift down, load up your Christmas tree on it, walk up the stairs and meet the Christmas tree up there. That's how we're gonna do it. All right, we'll use that wire for something. So the, so the concept of doing magic stairs is gonna be my solution for the fact that we don't have like a shed. It's not like my last house where I had all this extra storage. And so more of my solution to keeping this garage from becoming a kid disaster is to do attic stairs that are easily accessible and keep a lot of stuff upstairs that I won't use, that I don't use all the time. That's the plan. So I'm gonna make the kids walk up the stairs to get their bikes and basketballs. That's how you do it. It's exercise. Yep. All right, so you were telling me that um, you said power will be down for five minutes. I don't understand how it's possible. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, let me show you here on the other side. Wait till he cuts that out. And then we'll... Try out, hold up for a second. Uh, what we're gonna do is, see all these circuits come from up above. Yeah. And they're running this way. Okay. So what we're gonna do, is there's a meter combo on the outside, which we'll go out and take a look at in a minute. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna take the meter combo and feed the panel on the outside hot. And as we feed it hot, each circuit that we disable will move over one by one, uh -huh. put it into the panel and then heat it up. So each wire will be dead for just a moment yeah. and we'll move it over. Is the panel bigger than this one or is it the Panel's same? Uh, 225 amp rated, it's 40 circuits. So it's the same size, uh -huh. and uh, a, a panel can only have 42 circuits. That's all it's allowed by code. So we'll use the other, what's, what'd you call that thing out there, the other panel? The other panel's a meter combo. A meter, and a combo to the meter, right? To, and so we'll use, because we're gonna fill this thing up. Yeah, but we're gonna gain spaces. Outside you have uh, single breakers, Got and it. we're gonna put the twin breakers, which I'll show you right here. Uh, so this is an acceptable panel? Yeah. So we'll put these type of breakers in here. They won't plug into this panel because it's already a 40 circuit panel, so they don't accept slots. The slots in there won't accept that breaker. But, but the new panel, the new box you're putting out there will? No, the 816 circuit panel outside uh -huh. will because it's less than 42 circuits, so it will allow spaces for this to plug in. Got it, okay. So this, this one won't, so if if it doesn't then it's basically illegal you know and we see it all the time on the job where they'll break the tabs off plug it in but you can only have 40 42 circuits in a panel by code mm, got it. so and if you have more you just have to have a sub panel sub panel yeah it has nothing to do with uh you know you're not counting 15 30 45 that's not what it draws yeah right. you know you're just going to do a load calculation so if your load calculation of your house allows you to operate on 200 amps, then it doesn't matter how many breakers you have, you know, because it's... Not everybody's it's, pulling maximum amperage at once. It, really, most things don't draw at all. Yeah. You know, you got, nowadays we got our LED lighting and you have all your high efficiency, you're gonna put your high efficiency fans in and yeah. things like that. So we don't draw much. If you, you look at a house when it's not, um, say it's not drying clothes or whatever, it's probably pulling 12 amps, 13 amps, something like that. It doesn't yeah. pull much. So you're gonna blow a hole through the block? Is that we're gonna that? put two holes through the wall and uh -huh. we're gonna put two inch sleeves through it. Uh -huh. So each wire that will come down will go right through that sleeve. Got it. So. And then um, I already called my drywall friend and she'll come in and fix all the holes with me. We'll give her plenty to do. <laughs> But she love us. It's really not much of a choice here. If you want to do this, you've got to make holes. Yes, that's right. You that's, got to. That's the way it goes. Yeah, we like doing this part of it because we get to tear your garage up. Yeah, and then <laughs> leave. And then leave. This is the panel that's going to go on the outside. And then what we're going to do is nipple through right here. Uh -huh. And there's a hole right there at the bottom. So we'll put, we'll line the bottoms up together. 
basically. And the holes that we're going to be putting through the walls will go through right here. Uh -huh. Now, is this is this an outdoor specific panel yep. or is it the same? Yeah, this is an outdoor rated panel. It has the uh, protective cover, it's lockable. Yeah. Uh, it has all them features. Now, one of the things about it is the reason we're coming down here in these holes is because it's a code violation to make any holes higher than the bottom. So no holes in this panel can be any higher than here. Because According, water and... Yeah, so if, if water does get in there, it just comes right out the bottom. It can never... And so if you put a hole in here and you had a wire that ran down to here, wire could just weep, the water could weep down that wire and then yeah. start tracking down the bus bar. That makes sense. So it makes a code violation, so yeah. Excuse and me. then is there any disadvantage other than me having to walk out here if something kicks? Is that why they don't put them outside? Why don't we just put them all outside? Uh, I, I don't really know. I mean, it's, it could be outside. We put them in both places. I mean, we're, we get a variety, so. From here on out, I'm putting the darn thing outside yeah. in one spot. Why not? Well, if it catches on fire, you want it to be outside, huh? Yeah. Not moving again. <laughs> so. I love it. I'm gonna do this. This is like a new thing for me. I guess they put them in somewhere so it's convenient. Uh, yeah, and, and I, I don't know if uh, it may be a security thing. Uh, you want to be able to uh, go and turn breakers off uh, or on oh, yeah. when you're in your pajamas or something like that. But uh, I guess someone uh, could come and I'm break in your pocket. Well, ADT, I'm gonna go break in your house, man. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> a good well, point. it's lockable. <laughs> it, so if they do, it's lockable. So, and that's why we have security systems and cameras, so, you know, go ahead. <laughs> you only got a few minutes. <laughs> so, the water heater had service to it here. And so, rather than running a whole new line, he used that sort of just cut it up in the attic, grabbed it in the attic, and then brought it down. So, this is going to be our dedicated line for our pressure washer. Yeah, that's right. What he did is he put a, a tick tracer on it so that yeah. he could find the wire in the attic. Mm. cut it because we couldn't remove it from that wall so we cut it and then he was able to bring it over here and use that wire so Sweet. good use for that wire instead of pulling out and cutting yeah, it nice what is this so this is ten a gauge. 10 gauge 10 gauge so this will give us nice clean power for our pressure washer absolutely and then the way the pressure washer the way this is going to be set up here is we have a 30 inch cabinet and then the pressure washer will be roughly here and below that will be our hose reel, below that will be our deionizer. We'll probably cut this and re redo this somehow, but I just want to go along. And then we're going to put our uh, outlet up here at 75 inches. The, the center of the outlet will be at 75 inches, so that's the plan. That'd be sweet. So we'll have our old microfiber towels and all that stuff right here. Uh, and then we'll have our buckets underneath. Actually, I'll probably put the buckets right here. And we'll have a nice setup with our bucket filler and stuff like that. Okay. And so we're centering that receptacle at about 75 inches. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, 75. I think it should be enough for me because we'll just put the pressure washer over this way. Okay. And so, and so you can see the plug. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Very good. Yeah, because then the plug comes off the back side and we cut the pressure washer, shorten the power cord. Okay. And then just plug in this little GFI thing, we just plug in or plug in right there. Okay. But it pulls like 17, 18 amps. Okay. That's what we need to dedicate. Yeah, so no problem. And then we're going to put rock wool, and I'm going to put a membrane on here, and then we'll put, uh, we might do double drywall to try to, this is my son's headboard right here. Okay, yeah, definitely you'll need that. It, it'll still make noise, and I won't be washing me sleeping, at least yeah, not yeah. often. But. Right, makes sense. Okay, all right, very good. Let me get him to put that receptacle in. We use this on commercial jobs. There to grum it off. There's no for that side. Ain't that pretty? Now, I saw they used a bunch of zip ties. Is that the thing? Yeah, it's okay. That's fine. What you want to do, uh, what you're trying to do is get the center of the 2x4. Yeah. Because they're only allowed to use inch and a quarter screws so that it cannot get into your 
They use inch and a half or two inch screws and they're liable for all of your electric work. Mm -hmm. So that, that's their code, inch and a quarter screws when you're doing five or a half inch drywall. Yeah, kind of. So, so let's see here. Mm -hmm. there. Yep, so as long as you stay in the center of the stud, you're not gonna have any issues with your wire. So anyway, but that's how they did it. Yeah, see, they did the stud puncher too. So. Yeah, we're gonna end up, um, this will all be blocked with, you know, cause we need to do this, so the pressure washer weighs a bunch. Okay. So we'll block this all out. All right. All right, very good. Okay, you ready? Yeah, so I think this could be a good network spot. Yeah. The only thing I'm thinking is that's gonna be closed all the time. This is gonna get too hot there. I mean, you're just gonna do saber cabinet there, right? Your towels at the top. Maybe just have a fan. I could, yeah. I would just the whole saw, whole saw the side of up here, and just get like a nice mesh cover, like filter for a fan, so it can just keep air yeah. going what we could in. Could do is just whole saw at the top, right up against the wall there. Yeah. And the I top. have those. Um, I can get one of those. Um, what are they called? The uh, you know the computers. I, get, I have some of them. Those yeah. Fans. So you can either do the top. You could use like a top and have a fan that blows in, and yeah. one that blows out, so it has circulating air. And you won't ever see it. I think that'd be a good spot for it. It'd be easy to get to. Lots of room up there. And again, I only need to run one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Cat, cat six. I'm gonna have him do it. <laughs> After they do all this major stuff. So, now we're going to fish the wall. Put it on here so it's got more, more to it. I do is just put one hook in. You see it down there? Yep. Right it's here. Let me to grab it. Yep. Got it. Pull it. Here you go. Enough to go over. Keep pulling. Yeah, we're gonna have to carve it out. You can't just leave it on the surface. Oh, you're gonna have to carve it. put the box. Yeah, because see the box is only uh inch and a half deep, and then we gotta put a P ring. Where's that box at? Travis. The one that was cut out. Oh yeah. Okay, we cut the nibbles off of it. Just put in there, see how it sticks out. Oh yeah. So we have to be in at least this far, and then that P ring that goes over it. Uh you know, so it's still gotta go back in there. We'll carve it out, it'll go back in there. First, we'll just try to carve it so it goes back about a half inch, but if it's hollow back there, we'll just pock it out and- You have to get we'll, lucky right now. Yeah. See. You're sweating, I'm not sweating. Yeah, I always do that. <laughs> I bought them when I played shirt, forgot to bring it. When I played softball, everybody thought I was dying on the mound because I, I just sweat like crazy, but that's it. when you live in Florida. All these people driving through here must think. <laughs> We've had so many people here at this place the last month. <laughs> They're like, what is wrong with these guys? Okay. Uh, they should have just built a new the house. I'm gonna grab that wire. Okay, so we got hollow. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do is we do the four corners and then we go along those lines and we put holes enough it gives us a relief point. And then I just take it with a sledge, pocket it right out. Mm -hmm. It's a nice cut. Yeah. So, and then you don't have to tear everything up behind it, so. Uh, we did want to ask you though, uh, this is for your woofer. Yeah. Okay, you want to put all your uh, stereo equipment on a separate circuit so that you don't get that harmonic distortion on it. Yeah. So, okay, so I'll, I'll do all that. Everything that goes on your uh, speaker system, I'll do it in a 14 gauge wire and, and we'll put it on a separate circuit. And you could even put a filter, you know, on that line too to clean it up if you wanted. Mm -hmm. So. Sweet. I don't think you're going to have any harmonics though because you got that uh, DC com that compressor. So the ones that put off the bad harmonics are cheap appliances. <laughs> so Nothing cheap going in. There. That's right. Okay. I don't know what someone's doing. They gave up. They got halfway through and gave up. And they just put an outlet cover right over. Yeah. Like the homeowner was trying to like, oh, let me put in an outlet real quick here. Yeah. And then they opened it up and said, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. They quit. Yeah, like, oh, no, it's not that easy, I guess. Yeah. You just don't drill holes? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to show you a that breaker, Matt. Yeah. Uh, so here's that uh, where we're going to gain space is at. Because see, all these are individual breakers, uh -huh. and this will be your twin breaker. And see, this has a different notch than the other ones do. It's still the same brand, but what it'll do is it'll accept that breaker. Uh, so the yeah, someone was telling uh, another guy doing something here, and uh, said well, that box in there won't accept the tandem like that. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why. And if if you see one. In a 40 circuit panel, they broke the tab off of the back of the, the breaker here because you can you can take that off of there and it's like even got a guard there, oh, yeah. but you can pop that guard off. But the problem with that is when you do, there's like a jaw in there yeah. and it no longer squeezes that jaw. So you lose your rating. There, yeah. yeah, fire waiting to happen when that happens. So yeah. anyway. And so we have this extra spots if we need it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll gain eight spaces out of here because we'll take and we'll put all of our 20s and our, our I'll actually get some 15s if I need to. Yeah. But we'll put our 15s and 20s in here and we'll move our bigger circuits over into the other panel. Love it. So, yeah. What else can we put in this place? <laughs> I got my dual uh, Sub-Zero 30-inch uh, fridge-freezer combo coming. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, that's a great refrigerator. Yeah. It, it has the depth of a cabinet, so that's yeah. what's so nice about it. And, and uh, the receptacle that uh, mounts above, you really got to follow those instructions real good yeah. because it's real specific. Yep. You'll put it right behind a compressor or something like that. Well, before I met you, I had some other dudes come out and they did it, but I told them exactly where to put it. Oh, good, good. And I measured it to the pretty yeah. precisely. But I do have 26 inches of depth for that 24 inch. Okay. Just, just so we have room, a little fudge back. Oh, good, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. What's up, little bro? What's up, little bro? Look at all these people, so many new people. It's like, <laughs> Get the sledgehammer and we'll pack it out. You guys gotta get this chair. Look at it. Oh. The wheels are too good though in the garage. I just, I start, just, just start going. I was trying to watch Heartland while I was measuring stuff yesterday and I just like started floating backwards. And I'm like, see, look, I'm floating. Man, the those wheels. caches are really nice on those. Yeah. We had the Ego Blower turn it around and the Ego Blower can. Like on any like, like new construction on the no. block? No, not at all. What they do is, uh, this is an inch and a half box. They use an inch and a quarter. Yeah. And then you got a little bit of a P-ring that gets over the top of it. Yeah. Makes up a total of an inch and a half. So you got, 
you got foam, and then you got your fur strip, which makes up an inch and a half. So you put a half inch P ring on it, so it works out perfect. Uh, because we're in the garage, we don't have the foam. We don't have the foam that we need. That's right. Yeah, what they did was they went right to the wall with the fur strip. Yeah. So. I didn't know I was going to be air conditioning this. Yeah. But I'll tell you what you can do uh, is uh, you can foam fill with the uh, the cell fill all around in your garage and fill it up. It fills all those cavities up. So they just go around and they drill holes in the wall every so often and they fill it with foam. It fills the whole wall up right away. It'll come out any of the openings or anything like that and it seals it off great. We did that in our home. It's great. Sure, yeah. Because we're doing uh, closed cell in the attic. We're going to get closed cell. Yeah, there you might be. Yeah, you're doing the number two closed cell? That's what you're doing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a much denser insulation, so you get a good R factor off of it with yep. not much thickness. And what's really nice about that? is it's like uh, super glue plus. Yeah. You know, it, it's, uh, if you were to spray it like on the metal rafters, uh, you know, if you had to put a metal roof up and you sprayed it, you wouldn't even have to put no screws down. It'd hold it down all by itself. Yeah. So. Okay, we're gonna have a lot of wires going down this wall here. And we don't have much cavity to put them in. When we do that, when we go across, you're going to be putting your cabinets up. So we're going to have to put, we're probably just going to have to put like a, a plate over the top of the whole thing. You know, something like that. Well, the upper is going to stop at 90 inches. Okay. So, yeah, it's going to come with some tape measure. Well, it's okay. The cabinet can go over it. It's just that we'll put nail plates to guard the wires. So, they're going to be inside of here. Yeah. Yep. So, we'll probably move them over to here and then guard them in here. Yeah. Just so something accidentally don't go into it. They're just... Yeah, because here is very clearly... Yep. Okay. We need our, we need our symmetry. For your Tesla. Ooh, yeah, yeah, 60 amps. It's a really nice breaker. Let's see, you'll always see this in the panel. This is for packing. You're supposed to unroll that completely and cut off the excess wire when you go into the neutral. Yeah. A lot of times you'll see that wound up. Yeah. Yeah, and if you loop it too many times, so if I took the amp probe and put it on here right now, it'd be three times whatever's going through that wire. So when you put them off. loops together like that, you cause heat inside of your panel. Yeah. So you always unwind them things. So I don't know if you see that on this. Oh, they did it. They did it nice. Yeah, so they unwound them. How much did that breaker cost me? Those things are a couple hundred bucks. Right? Uh, yeah, it's about 140 bucks. Yeah, we need, we need two of them. Yeah. Because I'm going to do two chargers just... Yeah, you also have to order them ahead of time because they're not they're not uh, something that's going to sit at Home Depot or Lowe's or anything like that. you got to get it through a supply house. Yeah. So. Or you can order off the internet. You can always do that too. But you do have to order it ahead of time. If people want to see how we do that. <laughs> Tesla nerds. I don't even try, I don't hook it up with them too. They're too cheap to frickin' just hire someone to do it. You see all these nerds on YouTube and they're like, here's how you do it yourself. So I'm not messing with frickin' 60 amps, bro. <laughs> and I'm an electrical engineer, like literally. And I have no idea what to do. You don't watch some other Tesla nerd jank wiring his Tesla. And so you're, it's like, like double nerve does not equal cool. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 60 amps, that's cool. Yeah, freaking double nerd. Like if, if you're a nerd watching a nerd do it wrong, it's still wrong. People are starting to get a little antsy about all this AV gear. Did you see my wall of cell phone first at the garage? Yeah. 
And the freaking power tower over there. Yeah. <laughs> I got subwoofers coming out the coming out the rear of him. <laughs> This is totally, I'm just gonna roll around on the stool all day. This is the damn push you around, and kick you around, over there, over here. I swear, some other goofball comes over to my house and puts a sticker on my panel. Harry, no stickers on my panel. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's something I never done. Don't do that. Yeah, I always got mad and it's always some paper sticker and I can't freaking get it off. It takes me an hour of using, you know, goo gone and bull crap to get this paper sticker on. See that douche sticker on there? I want to murder those people. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> what is that, a termite inspection or something? Oh, yeah. What do you need? There's no wood in this freaking house. What do I need a termite inspection for? You guys trying to sell me some termite bond? Like, there's, there's no there's wood. There's plenty of wood in this house, believe me. Yeah, well, it would if I believe it. In 175 years, it might cause damage. Nah, I'm not doing it. <laughs> the biggest scam in the world is a freaking termite bond. Nonsense. You know, there's a lot of termites here in this neighborhood. I said, yeah, well, in, in 45 years, it might matter. Everybody always uh, tries to sell their house. Like, well, what's your, what's your termite on? Yeah, I'm freaking out. I used to get suckered into that when I was younger and stupid. Couldn't afford it. Like, man, I gotta get a termite bond. Pay like 1500 bucks for it. <laughs> that I don't have. Nonsense. Mm. It's like buying a freaking warranty on your car. Don't do it. You need a warranty. Don't buy that because you can't afford the car. Don't buy the car. It's a simple formula. Go for it. Mm, live within your means. Yeah. Or if you're not, just. That's tough right there. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this dog. He loves this man. He's living his best life out there. He loves this street and everybody. People come and they hang out with them all day, like 10 people a day. Just come and play with them. Tissy, what are you doing? He looks like a grandma dog. Sure. Looks like a grandma dog. <laughs> see what they're doing back here. Well, the other day I was doing a live stream with a, a couple of guys, Mike and uh, I forget what the other guy's name is, and I'm ranting about turtle wax, and then I see the camera pan over and he's got a turtle wax banner in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that's where that door was over there? Yeah. And they restuccoed that? Yeah. yeah, I'm waiting until all the landscaping is done before I have them come paint everything. Can you see that? Do you imagine this? They're like, hey, hey uh, let's uh, spec a door to nowhere. Like, why would you put a door right here? Like, where are you going to go? There's a hill. It's a freaking five foot hill to nowhere. It's stupid. Well, let's put a light on there too. That's a good idea, Nancy. Let's uh, let's get all set up for uh, our door to the side of the house to nowhere. Roll down the hill. Like you walk around, save yourself the you know two thousand bucks on the door. Then I got to pay two thousand bucks to get the door taken out. Morons. You might want to come out and look at your air handler here in case oh, yeah. you easy access. Yeah, yeah, or your condenser. Stupid. Or was leaking water and stuff like this. This is the dumbest thing ever. They put one on that house too. Look, there's a door going to nowhere. What do you need a door on the back of the garage for? Watch the oh, bombs poop pile. Bro, you're supposed to poop in other people's yard. You can't get to them. 10 gauge, we get good clean power. We get an extra, extra 10 PSI out of that. Oh boy, lots of drywall. Lots of drywall. Seems to be the theme that we do a lot. It's always um, yeah. drywall. More drywall. This time I'm gonna have Katie come and do it. And uh, I'm not gonna be here. I don't even wanna see it. We just come back and like, wow, magically done. Lift controller is going to be key. So that means box. 
charge up you down here. Yeah, when we uh, when we wrap that uh, the Tesla, we'll be using the the framing members up there to run it through. You know, we're underneath your wood and all that. So we'll just put it through that. That way, I'll never never be bothered. get up and go check outside. <laughs> this is my kind of work. It's nice and comfy today. It was only what, like 75? It's beautiful. And that's why you put nail plates on, right there. <laughs> that could have been bad. First charger, the one that we have is put there. Okay. And then I'll get another one in next week or a couple weeks from Okay. Now. All right, that sounds good. And uh, what we'll do since that's a bigger wire, you probably want to do that in the conduit. Is that how you want to do that? I don't want to see it. You don't want to see it? Okay. So we're going to put it behind the drywall. Yeah. yeah we'll just have to chop. We'll chop the drywall is all we'll do. Yeah. So, yeah. So only thing that that uh, charger does is really pretty simple. Yeah. Um, you put up the wire and hang it. Yeah, because we can put the just put the wire coming out, and we just knock one of those holes out. Just hang it, and that's it. I don't know if this is right side or one way or the other. But. So if we come out right there with the wire, and then this just goes right to the drywall. Most of the time, cut the wood here, but I wanted to just do two of them just in case. For the next owner. For the next owner. It's just gonna sit on the floor. Okay. And then I think put it right above the right above the base. So the lines could actually come right out of the concrete. So the lines come out. So we're gonna slot the concrete. We're just gonna slot it just enough. Because then I'm gonna twist over the flooring on top of this. Okay. And so we're gonna we're gonna slot it just like uh, three quarters of an inch or something yeah. like that. And then um, and put a U channel on top of that, and then our okay. flooring right over that. And then um, the, the lines come up to the bottom of the box. Okay. And then right, right next to the box. Actually, it'd be better behind the box, wouldn't it? If yeah. it's flush. Yeah, well, we can get it in there. All we'd have to do is pop that off. I told you, let me get it yeah, off. Sure. So, right on. The box is going to go. Then when I get the thing, I can just notch the. Okay. It's just hard wires, you know, plugged in. Just hard wires. Okay. To the okay. To the and it's got quick fittings. Uh. I think so. I don't remember what it has. We'll just make up our own code on that. Electricians always have to have some special box. We just tie it together and do a couple of twist roos all of that. That's going to be the hot. And then we know, so we got to find out where this one goes. Right here. Let's so we'll put the tick tracer on it. It's gonna make that um, when we find it. There it is. Bingo. We don't want that anymore. Good. Oh, uh, you know what? They had a freezer there. Okay. So they just tapped in that, that switch. This is probably why they drill a hole in here. And then decided, oh shoot, we can't get it there. That's probably what it is. And then they said, well, let's just grab it off that switch. Yep. Perfect, because we don't want that anymore. Yep. 
The reason we don't want that is because we're putting quad, a quad outlet at the corners or the sides, as well as outlets below the cabinets. You can always uh, tell if these are dead. By you press the test button, it makes it pop out, and you can't reset it. It doesn't let you reset it unless it's uh, got power to it. So, yeah, it's on that circuit. So they must have did the garage doors and dropped down to this. So this convenience outlet's not not a uh, really a good circuit. It's only good for a speaker, not good for a vacuum sweeper. Yeah, I've been using it for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like your garage doors come up with this GF on. At least this one. At least that one? Yeah. I don't think that one. I think okay, it's just that's this hot. one. Well, obviously that's hot. Okay, yep, so they're both on it. not have been on that size circuit because right. you want to wire your garage in number 12. So how do you how are you going to wire it for because the new garage will probably be here in about three three weeks. Well we'll just drop number 12 down. We'll, uh, the, these circuits here are going to be in number 12 so they'll be okay. fully rated Yeah. and the garage doors are going to be fully rated. As long as you're on a 20 amp circuit you're not going to be running everything at one time, but you want it to be on big enough capacity. Yeah. Because you, every yeah. time you put it on something smaller, it just compromises the circuit. So the ADT guy had a convenience put those modules there. We're going to pull those back up in the attic and put a, put them in a plug upstairs. Yeah. Those are for the cameras. Yeah, that should be on an uninterruptible power source too, so you never lose your cameras. Yeah. Well. So we want to probably do that. All, all you have to do is get uh, a good UPS and that, just plug it in. Yeah, I want to get those out of there. I don't want that. I don't want anything on the ceiling. The whole idea is once the garage doors go out, the ceiling's going to be nice and clean on the truck. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll put that up in the attic. That's no problem. You can even put them on the same outlets as our um, as our Speaker lifts. System and all no, that. our our lifts. Okay. All right. You know, our, our stair stair lift and all that. Okay. All right. It's gonna happen pretty soon here. Things are gonna start moving over. So you can't just put a new a new like box on the outside of the house, like a new two by four box like that. What do you mean? So you're going to fit all of the wires between that furniture, right? Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to put your wires outside because you want to keep them dry. You want to try, and you don't want to make any connections if you can avoid it. That's just a place for something to happen. How's that big fat gray wire going to fit in there? It's not. It's, uh, that's, what feeds, uh, that's what feeds the panel. I don't know. I know that's a big fit wire. Or does that go? Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to deal with that one a little different. That one's going to be a tough one. Yeah. That feeds another panel inside your house. But it'll go on a breaker, and we will have to carve that in the wall. Like, we'll probably have to drop down the cell. Yep, there's room in the cell to put it down. That's beautiful. See, I didn't Jimmy, notice this. Jimmy, go in the back. Give me a. This has got to go outside the hill. Mm -hmm. I was, I was, I was looking at it. That's right. No, that's okay. That's okay. You've got yeah. one to the outside. That's right. Okay. We're going to feed it with the outside. Yeah. So that cable doesn't even go back in. No, there. That, that goes off. Yeah. We're going to eliminate that one. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so that wire does not have to go in the wall. Ah, okay. So gotcha. this, this, all these do, that's kind of thick. So you're just going to go right from the other panel into this mm -hmm. new panel. Yep. 
<laughs> yep. Oh, well, then that does make it a lot easier. Yes, it does. Yeah, so all we got to do is worry about the thickness of that. And that's the thickest it'll be. And you're going to have your two Tesla wires that'll go down there. That'll be the number six wire, so that'll be a little thicker. Mm -hmm. Not too bad. So. Now remember, I got to convert my double oven to a 50 amp. Yes, that's right. The 50, I got a 50 outside too. Yeah. So if you want us to do that now, as soon as we pull it back over, I'll make sure to I mean, put it in 50 I then. I don't think there's any problem with running a 50 on a, the one that's in there now. Would it matter? No. No, you got it on a 40 already. Right. And that's the number eight wire, so it can handle 50 amps. So when you put a breaker on, you're protecting the wire. Yeah. So we just don't want the wire to burn up in the wall. Mm -hmm. Your appliance burns up, that's another thing. So that's got protection on it, all kinds of different ways. Yeah, the because the new Wolf is a 50. Okay. The car is a 50, I'm sure it doesn't draw a 50, it probably draws 35, but. That's about right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you say it was a wolf oven? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Double. so you got your gas up above and you got your oven below. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Just two two ovens. Two ovens. So okay. I'm doing the in wall double oven and then I have a cooktop, which is gas. Okay, all right. So okay. separate cooktop. Okay, so we're gonna do this one. He, okay. should, he should be coming out here in just a minute going, Where's, why is my lights off? <laughs> That was to the the bed, bath, laundry, hall cans. So yeah, he should be out here in a minute. Imagine doing that first thing in the morning. <sighs> we may have to put a junction box above. What we do is that's not a bad spot. Okay, well I'm gonna go up above and see what I can free up. And we have all these wires running down that track and it's nice and square over there so we take the square out of it and we get a lot of extra wire out of it. camera that was only like 30 seconds to do all that. Yeah. <laughs> With a simple snap of your fingers. Yeah it was a nice panel too, it's copper panel. Oh yeah. Fully rated. So then you'll have to work some some magician skills to yeah, we'll get this all cleaned up and nice and flat. All these will lay in there nice and flat. We'll get them all. We'll take and foam fill all that. Yeah. Make it nice and neat. And then what about future? Because you're going to be coming back here wiring all kinds of other stuff. Yeah, everything we wire from the outside now. Yeah, it's really not that hard. Yeah. Inside or outside, it's got a chase pipe that goes up. Yeah. So it is accessible still. So yeah, I would say you've uh, probably made it easier, not not harder. Hmm. Yeah. I guess you know, so we can do. So you don't want to do the bulk of the wiring through chases, right? Through outside. No, you don't. Know, actually, uh, you're not supposed to group too many of them together. Yeah. So if the pipe's longer than 23 inches. So yeah, we avoid it. We bring in all the 
12s down there. Uh, but uh, that was how the service was built, so we're just going to grandfather that part in. Let's go take a look out back. Camera's back. Camera's back, nice. He can sense it, he can feel it. How the Germans do it, where they don't do little baby seats, they do them for grown ups. Yeah, not like yeah. the Japanese seats. Yeah, for those bratwurst thighs, you know, or the even the GT350, you know, should make that for big fat Americans. I'm like floating. <laughs> yeah, that feels really good. And the bolsters are adjustable still, so like on the, on the side, you can bring them in. Or... Yeah. I can make a driving video after I'm done. 